Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you so much that um, as we begin our time of worship, we can expect you to already be in this room. And so right now we ask that you soften our hearts, whether we're physically in this room or whether we're listening on the live stream, will you just soften our hearts to recognize where you're at? We turn our eyes to you. We leave everything at the door just focus on your goodness, on your love, on your mercy, and we choose to worship you this morning. We give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming. you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry It's all about you, Jesus. 
This time, I would like to invite the children forward with our guest speaker, Pastor Jerry, for children's time. And I would like to invite you to pass the peace of Christ to someone around you this morning. everybody this morning. Are you awake? How was school? Yay! Ooh. School? Yay! <laughs> well, I am not Miss Christy. Miss Christy called this morning, and she's sick. And so we're going to pray for Miss Christy as we uh, leave this morning and go to Power Hour. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, you know, we're, we're talking in big church about what home looks like, and you all know what home looks like. You have a home. But I was wondering if you knew what it meant to be homesick. Does anybody know what it means? What do you think it means? You can't come to, like, places. You're sick, and you can't go to places. Well, that makes sense. Do you, do you have an idea? What do you think? When you go to places and you miss your home, you, you feel... miss your home, yeah. It's kind of a tricky word. It, it could mean just um, kind of like we think about Christy being at home and being sick. But we don't use it that way. When we, when we think about being homesick, we think about longing for being home. Like maybe the first night that you sleep over with a friend and you're not at your home, you might get homesick. Matter of fact, you might call mom or dad and say, come and get me. I want to be at home. So homesickness is really just a longing for that place that we feel safe and, and everything is good and everything is just perfect and we're with the people that we love and, and uh, the people who love us. I woke up last night at 3.25 a.m. And I started thinking about my mama and daddy, and I got homesick. And the reason I was homesick is because my mom and daddy are in heaven, in that home place where God has promised us uh, he had prepared a place for us. Do you know anybody in your family that's already gone to heaven? Just raise your hand if you, yeah, there's a few of us who have people in our lives who aren't here anymore this side of heaven they're on that side of heaven and and Jesus taught us when he was here he said don't don't let that bother you when you don't see the people that you love anymore I'm going to prepare a place for them in my house there are many dwelling places and he told us he made us that promise that he was going to go and prepare a place for us and for us to call home so 
our homesickness one of these days will be completely resolved. It will be made whole and new and perfect. And it's that place that we call heaven. So when we think about heaven, heaven is just not some uh, dream world out there somewhere that we haven't been to, but we hope it's going to show up one day. Heaven is a real place. And it's a place where people we love will meet us and there will be no more homesickness. There will be no more sickness at all. So I'm looking forward to that home where I can see my mom and daddy and my grandparents again and, and feel just like home. Won't that be nice? Yes. Let's pray for Miss Christie as we make our way to Power Hour. Lord, we are grateful for home. We are grateful for the people we love. And Lord, for those that we miss today, who are no longer with us on this side of heaven, we give you thanks, Lord, that there is that community in heaven that's waiting for us and that will be welcoming us. We pray that you'll be with Miss Christie today as she's at home sick, that she will get better and will be back with us soon. We love her and we love you, O oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God loves you and I love you. We all love you. Have a great time in Power Hour as you go learn more about Christ. Have a good day. See ya. I think they wanted to stay. <laughs> Welcome to Hillsdale United Methodist Church. My name is Jerry Webb. One of the pastors here, I have just a couple of announcements I'd like to share with you. First of all, we're having the Red Cross come this Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon for a blood drive. It's from 1.30 to 6 p.m. And I learned at the uh, 9 o'clock service, there are still five open spots. Now, they will always take walk-ins if you just happen to think the day of you'd like to go try they have a certain amount of walk-ins that they allow for, but there are five reservations that are open, and all you have to do is sign up at uh, redcrossblood.org. So I hope you will do that, and we'll have a full capacity on Tuesday to donate blood. Also, I wanted to remind you that next Sunday, September the 10th, uh, Mary Ann Hartman will be starting Grief Share. Grief Share is, is really a group, a support group, a group that comes together and talks about kind of their start current state of grief and where they're at in this journey. You could have lost someone dear to you recently, or you could have had an experience years and years ago that you're still struggling with grief. Grief is one of those things that uh, kind of creeps up on us. So if you'd like to be a part of a group that, that talks and shares and and goes through that journey together. That'll begin next Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Marianne asks that you contact her so she can have enough curriculum for everybody uh, on order and in place when, when the program starts next Sunday. Also, this morning, we welcomed, as a part of our first Sunday of every month, we welcomed a new member. And uh, Phil was at the first service. I asked him a couple questions. Here he is with his... Uh, grandson, I'm not sure if that's a son or daughter. I thought it looked a little bit like Yoda, he, the way he was carrying. But anyway, I asked Phil this morning, Phil Martin, if he loved Jesus, and he said he did. And I said, do you love Jesus enough to come alongside of us and to share in the way God has gifted you with his grace in this ministry? And he said he would. And so we welcomed Phil, and I want you to welcome him as well. We're all one church. We just happened to meet at two different times. So if you would respond uh, as we say this responsive reading together in welcoming Phil Martin to our church as a covenant member. We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's holy church. And we bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers our presence, and our service. And we welcome Phil Martin to be a part of our church family. You are in for a treat today. We're welcoming Loana Diaz to come and 
preach for us this morning and to bring us God's Word. And I, we, have, we were just delighted at the 9 o'clock hour. I shared with you last week how Luana and Maddie joined our church last October and they brought together a life group that they are now leaders of, uh, which is Venezuela people. She'll share a little bit about that and her journey and her call to ministry. Uh, when Luana first approached Tori and I, she said, you know, I think I'd like to be a lay speaker. I'd like to be able to share from the pulpit and help pastors out when they need a vacation or something like that. And then, then God just kept nudging and, and, and pulling on Leanna. And she finally came to a point. She said, you know what? God is calling me to be a pastor. And I'd like to pursue that and explore that within uh, Hillsdale Church. And so our PPR team met with her several weeks ago and we were overwhelmed by her, her uh, warmth and her Christian faith and her expression of her faith. And so I wanted to get Loanna in front of you so she could share her story and to tell you about how much she loves Jesus. So she's coming in just a little bit to share with us and, and what a delight it is to have she and Manny as part of our, and her children, as part of our uh, church home here at Hillsdale. Would you pray with me as we pray for Loanna and as we pray for our service of worship this morning? Let's, let's pray together. Oh God, we are grateful for the church. We are grateful for the community of faith that comes together as believers. We are here, Lord, because we love you or we're seeking to fall in love with you in a very special way. Here we are, Lord, in your presence, lifting our hearts and our minds, our souls and our spirits to you. Come invade us with your Holy Spirit. And may we find the common love that you share through each and every one of us as the body of Christ. As we come once again this first Sunday in our church, we celebrate Holy Communion, where this holy sacrament is open to all who gather. It is our way of saying, come to the table and share in the love and the precious gift that Jesus has prepared for each of us. We come, Lord, knowing that we can expect to leave changed, renewed, revived in our faith. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to worship both in person and online as well. May our lives be transformed this day and forevermore. We pray this prayer this morning in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. I've invited Elisa to read the scripture for this morning. So if you have your Bibles, will you flip to Proverbs chapter 4? We're going to be starting on verse 20 and reading to 23. We'll give you just a second to flip there. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are the life of those who find them and the health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for the wisdom that comes from these words. And so right now, as we begin our time of, of tithes and offerings, will you just help us to view it not as just something to, uh, to pass on by, but as an act of worship itself. We thank you so much for the ways that you've been there for us all along. And we joyfully give back to you. We thank you in advance for everything you're going to do through what we give. We trust in you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers forward for tithes and offerings. I love you, Lord. Oh, 
your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am. giving me this opportunity. My name is Loana. I'm not going to mess you up with my last name because it's so hard for you. <laughs> I know you already have a job with the first name, so call me Loa if you want to. It's easier. It's short. Um, 
I was saying this morning, thank you, Hillsdale Church, for becoming my church. And more than a church, I want to say thank you for becoming my home. As an immigrant uh, family, we spend a lot of time looking for the right place for us uh, without a response. I was sharing that for a long time, over four years, we were going to another church where for some reason we never felt like we'd, we'd belong there. Um, and I actually, I was sharing that once, you know, many has been worshiping at the worship team for a while here. Um, we are so grateful for this opportunity to serve the Lord with our talents and also with, in our language. Let me tell you, you have no clue how meaningful it has been this for us. Even when man is singing there in Spanish and you don't have a clue what he's talking about or what he's singing, you know that it's something for the Lord, so you praise the Lord with your heart. That's, I mean, that's amazing. When you, you don't understand, but you are there and you know, you give it to the Lord. You know, I was saying that um, many was, he went through some tests because he want to worship, he want to go with the worship team um, and do the same at that, uh, that other church. And after like three tests that they made to him, they come, came back by saying, well, we are not sure about your accent. And it, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts when somebody tells you, well, you know, the Bible said that we are a body, right? Yes. The church is a body. All members has a function, something to do with, has a, has a purpose with. And uh, it is hard when you think that you are a hand and somebody else tells you, no, you are not a hand. So it was something, I, I think many felt that way. And um, please don't get me wrong, that's an amazing church. Many great things happen in that church. I'm 100% sure that God is working on that church, on that church people. Um, it was just not the, the right place for us. And um, after many, many times that we, we, we start feeling like, since the very beginning, let me tell you, like, we don't belong here. We don't belong here. Uh, but at first, as immigrant people, you start thinking like, well, maybe this is, this is how you feel. Because it's a different language, it's a different culture, so you at first feel like you don't belong. But when the times go on over four years, I was like, okay, something's wrong. There's no way that <laughs> I can be in a place where I don't feel that I can be myself. And then we, we just stopped going there. And for a while, we were just stay home. And then I saw, I told many, hey, this is wrong. We need to find some other place. And we start going to other churches and let me tell you, we went to so many crazy churches that it was interesting. It, it was very interesting. Um, we finally, this church is on our way to work because we, we well, many used to work there, but I still work, I'm still working for Ashley Furniture Industry. So this is my way every day when I go to work. And I was asking many, hey, that church looks, it's pretty. Why don't we try there? Um, he said, well, it, it's way too far from where we live. And he said, well, we drive there. We drive over there all, every day for work. Why don't we do that for church? What's the problem? Well, okay, let's give a try. So the first time we came, you were celebrating baptisms at the hill. Um, it was interesting because you can, you can look from the road. And then the first things that happened was that on the way we were walking, we started listening the music, and the song was actually a hymn that I did not listen since I was in my country, in my church. So for us, it was like, if I not, I'm not mistaken, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm home. <laughs> I'm finally home. Right after that, of course, Christy saw us, and she reached out to us, she saw that we got two little kids, so she introduced herself, she gave us a tour around the church, 
and she showed us the, the room, the classroom for the kids and everything. And I remember we let the kids play at the playground for a, a little bit. And then I saw some, it was trash or it was dirty around the playground. So I saw a broom and I got the broom and started sweeping. And then I found Manny recording a video of me sweeping. <laughs> and I asked him, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a video of you. I think we found the place. We found the church. <laughs> Why did you say that? Because you're already cleaning. <laughs> you are yourself. <laughs> you know, my, and he's telling that because all my friends call me Martha. You know, Martha and Mary from the Bible. Also, my best friend, she tells, if we, we have to write a, a book about your life, the book will be called, she wants to be Mar Mary, but Martha don't let her go. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for becoming home for us. Thank you for, for making a space in your heart for me and my family. I cannot put in words what this means to me and to my whole family. We love this church. We love you all, even if we don't know you. We love you because this is what a church is. It's a home. It's a place where you can be yourself. And it, it is a place where we finally feel that we belong. Um, you know, stay, stand up here speaking in English. Oh, my God. You are so lucky. You are American and you speak English so well. For me, let me tell you, it's, it's hard because I always feel that my English is not that good. So if you have some, a complaint, go to him because it's, <laughs> it's not about me. Let me tell you, I went so many times to go by saying this is such a bad idea. I mean, this is such a bad idea. You don't have a clue. And, and like Moses did, you know, when God called Moses to, I need you to, to do something with my people. And he say, I can't. I can't. You are wrong. I can speak. I'm not eloquent. I, I, I haven't been, never in my life. I was not before. And I can now. And God came back to him by saying, it is not about you. It is about me. I'll be with you, and my words will be with your mouth. Well, I didn't want to do the same that Moses did. <laughs> like, no, I still can. Look for someone else. And so God said, oh, my goodness, bro, Aaron, and he's going to speak for you. <laughs> but I got a, um, a sentence, and I'm 100% sure this was God, by when God told me, God does not call the capable people. He enables the one who calls. And then I was so excited about this. It was such a discovery for me that as so many get home, got home that day, I was like, hey, many, guess what? God does not call the capable people. He enables the one who calls. And he was like, well, that's great. Good for you. Go for it. And he was like... Okay, and two hours lady, later, uh, Christy was texting me, you know, I'm going to go with the girls for the, for the professor uh, trip. Um, apparently, they need somebody who drive the bus in case of an emergency. So Christy wa was basically asking me to drive a bus. And many saw my face, and he said, what happened? Well, this is Christy texting me by asking, hey, do you, can you drive the bus in case of emergency? <laughs> he was like, well, God does not call the capable people. <laughs> there you go. Be my guest. Don't you want to love God with all your heart and serve the people? <laughs> now, that's, well, hopefully, hey, don't worry, you're your people is going to be safe. Christy is going to drive over there and back home. I already made the test. Apparently, I passed. So hopefully, if any emergency comes up, Christy is going to be, you, your girls are going to be in good hands. So no worries. So I, I start thinking on 
well, what can I do so you can get to know me? Because unfortunately, I don't have a fancy title, right? I cannot stand up here by saying, I'm Tori, blah, blah. I'm a pastor of this church, or I'm Jerry, or I'm, I'm Noah Elliott, and I'm the director of the Jewish people. I don't have that. But I just want to let you know a little bit about me. First of all, well, I told you my name. Um, I'm from Venezuela, and I want to like, I always point this, the fact that Venezuela is not in Mexico. I'm not Mexican, <laughs> by the way. Because there's people still asking, where in Mexico is Venezuela? No. <laughs> Venezuela is in South America, actually. Um, we have been living here in America for almost seven years now. Uh, we came here to this country running for safety because our country right now is in such a mess. Like, it's a dangerous place to live. Um, we made this decision after our first child was born. So well, after Samuel was born, we just decided to move here uh, for safety. Uh, one of the things that happened to us is that they stole my, our car four times. Um, I remember the last time they stole my car, um, a close friend has this experience. Somebody stole her car um, the, with the baby on the back seat. So, thanks God, the, the person who got the car realized the baby was crying on the back and he just stopped the car on the highway, put the baby on the sideway and keep going. I started asking many, hey, what is that? Something like that happened to us. In Venezuela, you don't even, many people don't use the zip car for the kids. You know, it's, it's because it's not safe. It's, it, it, it's awful. Because it's, it's faster if you gotta get your child, you gotta do it quick. Quick, just in case. You, you wanna be safe. So our country was not a safe place for us anymore, and we decided to come um, here. Um, um, I'm a wife. I have been married with many for 17 years now. I'm dating the same guy for 20 years. It's going to be on September the 10th since we start dating. Uh, those there are my dad and my mom. So I'm a daughter. All I know came from them. Both of them passed away. My dad passed away in 2011. My mom passed away in 2018. When I was actually here, I was not able to go and say bye to my mom. She passed away when I was here. Um, yeah, that was something, something else. <laughs> uh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of two, two little kiddos. These are Samuel and Mia here on the Bible, vacation, school. They had so much fun there. Samuel is seven years old, and Mia just turned six a um, couple weeks ago. Um, I'm a lawyer. I went to college in my country, and I graduated as a lawyer, and I found a job in a bank, at the legal department of a bank, and I spent 10 years of my life working as a lawyer in that place. So, yeah, I, I got the opportunity to get some education, um, I'm a Christian, the most important things of all. I met Christ when I was 18 years old um, by reading a Bible that a friend gave to me. And let me tell you, uh, reading the Bible was such a discovery for me. I, I soon start feeling from God that I need to compromise more and more um, since then, I just has this feeling in my heart that I just want to love God, serve people, and love people on the best way I can. Not because I, because I want to get something back, but because he gave me so much, and he did everything for me, that I, I don't find a way to get, to get back to him on the best possible way. So... Anytime I have an opportunity to serve God, I'll be there, even if I don't feel capable. <laughs> um, this is a group of the, uh, the youth group of that church. I 
quickly get compromises at that church as soon as I start going there. I think two months later, I got, I got baptized. And then right after that, I saw a need into that church. There were many jo young people there, but they did not have a leader. So I went to the pastor, talked to him. I make a proposal and he say, be my guest. There is your people. So I start leading the youth group by just meeting every Saturday, share a lesson from the Bible. We share some, some fun, something fun to do, uh, play together, eat some snack. Um, we did that for a long time. After I got married with many, uh, the church asked, asked to us to compromise in a different level, and we became the deacon for the youth group at that time. So we got to deal with uh, about 80 young people in that church. Um, it was so much fun. I mean, by that time, I, I don't want to be known at, at this moment, but it was, I was, whenever I see Noah, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm so old. <laughs> I'm so old now. <laughs> Because I just can't, can't remember all the time that we were, we were working with the youth group. It's such an interesting experience. Let me tell you, this has, has to be something different with all American kids, other culture, you know. It should be something else. I'm so excited about that professor treat that I'm going, I'm, I'm joining. I'm looking forward to it because I know it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. After becoming deacons, and we, we did that for, for many years as well, the church just decided to make me a member of their director's board. Um, I spent a couple of years doing that. Maybe you don't recognize me at the picture because I, my weight was over 230 pounds by that time. But uh, yeah, that's me, that's me. <laughs> So, yeah, my, this journey after I met God has been interesting. Um, I, I'm just grateful for all God has made for me and for my family. But this is not about me. Again, this is about him. And we have been talking about home this couple weeks ago. And today I want to share with you what is home. And home is where your heart resides. You find almost in every place around here this sentence, right? I got this from Goodwill, and I got it at home. Because home is where the heart resides. What that means? Well, we all know that home becomes more than a physical place. Home is more attached to an emotional thing for us. Um, you can see so many houses. It's not your house, but it's somebody else's home, right? So for me, after thinking and digging into the meaning of this, I finally got to the conclusion of the, this is home. Home is where you feel safe, is where you feel that you belong, and is where you can be yourself. As I told you before, we roam from our country. We can say we roam from home looking for safety. And yeah, we got such a good place where we, see, we feel safe. America is a safe place for us to live. And we are so grateful to God for this opportunity. Also grateful for all of you American people who opened your door and just let us live here. But what happened or how it looks like when you miss the other part? When you are in a place where you don't feel you belong or where you are in a place where you cannot be yourself. I remember once I was coming out from Jason Deli, a restaurant, and I was talking to Samuel in Spanish. And it was an old man coming, coming in and he yelled on me, speak in English. You are in America. And he was like, okay, you are not home. I get that. You cannot be yourself. Speaking English, you are in America. 
Then I told you the story, like, we are not sure about your accent. What in the world? <laughs> you don't belong here. This is not your place. And then I remember many, uh, the first job that many got was as a, wait a waitress at, um, in a Mexican place. And he came home by saying, hey, guess what? Somebody told me, you got to go back to your country. And I was like, well, somebody's going to be disappointed because <laughs> we, are not going, we are not going back to our country. So I remember I, I let my mind going through those sentences so much, so much. I was so frustrated that I once posted uh, something on Instagram by saying, being an immigrant is like living in somebody else's house where it is not your house, but you are still grateful because they let you live in there. And I remember a friend comment my post by saying, make it your home, Loa. And I was like, well, how? How you can do that? When there is many people I and mean, many times like made you feel like you don't belong here. You cannot be yourself. So I start thinking and how I start fighting with God and complaining, complaining a lot because how it looks like when you are looking or you are trying to make a home and you got to leave behind everything you had, such a wonderful life. You got to leave behind all your people, all your family, all your culture, all your food. Oh, my God. That's the first things that you miss. <laughs> it's awful. You miss everything. You miss even the, the bad people. It's like, I miss that. You miss everything. You get broken in so many ways. How it looks like when you got to pack in two suitcases your whole life because you cannot bring anything else to start all over again from zero in a different place with a different culture, a different language, a different everything. How it looks like when you get, a ch get bare a child and you got another one who is barely one year old and you have no family around to support you. How it looks like when your kids does not get to meet your family, when your mom passed away and you are not able to go home to say bye. How it looks like when you don't have enough money to support your family. How it looks like when you made a sacrifice and got some education so you can have a good life. And then you come here and you got to go and do some jobs that you, you, you never had a clue that you were able to do. Because that's what it is. Right? So what? What is home? How can I make home after all that? This is not an intention to pity. I already feel the pain. This is not an, uh, an intention to pity, it's not self-pity, self but let me tell you, I spent a long time there in that chair. Self-pity, like, why me? Why this? I'm complaining to God a lot. And right after, God showed me, like, I spent so much time digging and staying with those sentences on my mind that I just put my heart on the wrong place. Because not everything was bad. Sometimes we put our mind and we focus our mind in the wrong places that we get to miss all the blessing that God has for us. And that was exactly what happened to me. I was missing all the blessing that God was bringing to me. I, I like to hear from Joyce Major. She's a preacher and a teacher. I, I, I love to hear from her. And she said, there is no testimony without a test. So whenever we go through tests, it's just God building our life, building our character, because he has a purpose with us. And whatever we need to go through, God just wants to make us perfect. God just wants to make us whatever we are meant to be for him. 
with a purpose. And it is amazing whenever you pass the test and you're able to stand up here and share all the blessing and all the things that God chose to you after going through difficult situations. So whenever we are, you are grieving or going through different circumstances that I, I'm telling just a story from my side, the side of an immigrant person who goes through so many tests and so many difficult situations. But I'm sure your situation is different and you all has been going through difficult situations in, in life. Don't get focused on your situation. Get focused on the God who is making something amazing through your situation and making you what you are meant to be for a purpose. Because nothing that happened to us is a waste. God is always going to use everything for good. Even if we, we cannot recognize the good on the bad things that sometimes we feel happens to us. So I was missing my bless. And here I got God in front of me by showing me, what about this? He brought us to our lives, these amazing people. Let me tell you, this is, um, we can go to the next slide. Um, these people, they are Brian and Cherry King. They are our parents here. It is, it is funny and it just melt my heart whenever they call us their Venezuelan family. And we also are their Venezuelan family. There is, there is Brian wearing a teacher, Venezuelan teacher, and it was in Mia's birthday party. Um, let me tell you, yeah, my kids did not get to meet my mom or my dad. Also, Manuel's mom passed away uh, 20 years ago. So the only grandpa my kids knows is Manny's dad. But here they are. God provides us for a grandpa and a, grand and a grandma for my kids. They actually call them, they are our papa and belly. Because my kids were so little when they meet them that they didn't know how to say cherry, so they call her belly. <laughs> and I know she loves that my kids, whenever, now that they know how to say cherry, it's like, I'm not cherry, I'm belly. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Those are the grandparents that God provides for my kids. Those are the people that God provides to support us. And I can give you another whole full series of sermons about what these people mean to us. How they have become such a grateful, blessed from God to our life. And I want to tell you, pay with kindness all the time. I am not going to tell you adopt an immigrant family because they are all are, are grieving or going through a very hard situation, but adopt somebody that you know that is in need. We can be a bless in so many ways. We don't have a clue. Everybody is dealing with something. Everybody is dealing with something. And we can be a bless. Sometimes you feel like maybe God put you in a place and by saying to somebody, hey, God loves you, it looks like it's simple, but it, it can be the word for somebody else that it, they need just those words. Be kind. Bring God to the other people's life because we all are dealing with something in life. Then I was, I was telling, thank you so much because you not only became our home, you were only, you now are a, a home for my people. I was sharing this morning with a denying service that and, um, I got a, a, a group of Venezuela people. We met together once a month and we start with something simple by gathering a Chick-fil-A in Clemens where I used to work and I remember once the owner operator, uh, Chick-fil-A Clemens, just came to me by offering the place if we need a place to gather. So Davey would let us use the place once a month just to meet there with, the, with my, the group of Venezuelan people. Let me tell you, I didn't know so many people at that point, but I knew a chat 
where a bunch of Venezuelan people were there at the triad, High Point, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and I just dropped an invitation there by calling, let's invite for a Pray for Venezuela. And we invite to eat uh, an arepa. So my, I was impressed when over 60 people show up at Chick-fil-A to pray for Venezuela. And we had such a wonderful time there. And we spent so, so, such a great time that I just asked David, hey, can we do this again? And he said, be my guest. The kitchen is yours. Um, you are welcome to do this anytime. So we start meeting once a month. After COVID, unfortunately, we got to stop. And after COVID, when everything was, looks like it's going back to normal, I start fighting this feeling like we got to start meeting again. But I did not want to because I didn't want to compromise. You know, it's a responsibility. Um, and then God start dealing with me by saying, hey, what if more people like you don't feel they belong? So I start again. We start meeting at home, now in a new place. And I was so impressed of how many volunteers you all, we have here at church for the Bible vacation thing for the kids that I just came to Tori by asking, hey, I saw you have so many volunteers. Is there any way you can provide us from volunteers uh, with volunteers? Because we got a bunch of kids, and sometimes it's crazy. They don't let, let us pray or, you know, speak. Uh, so Tori said, well, I cannot offer that because it's also hard for us to get volunteers, but I can give you something better. Why don't you bring your group here and you meet at church? And I was like, oh, my God, I just couldn't believe this is happening. So you also became a home for my group. And let me tell you, we are so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity. So we, we, we want to say thank you for that. We fell at home so quickly. Let me tell you, I remember for the Christmas party we had, we had a Christmas dinner here on, back on December and I remember we brought a big bucket where we were collecting clothes and all stuff for poor people in our country. And I remember I went out with so many, a bunch of stuff with me for the food, everything. I just, I forgot the bucket. Somebody put the bucket in that room. And then Christy texted me by asking, hey, what about this? What I need to put this? And it was like, oh, my God, I feel so at home that look at me, leaving my shoes everywhere now. <laughs> you know, you get home, you leave your shoes everywhere, <laughs> whatever place you find. So, yeah, we are so grateful, and we, we just wanted to say thank you. I just wanted to, to show a video. This did not work on the first service, by the way. We are a group of Venezuelan people who gather to pray, and this is the way we say thank you, Hillsdale Church. Gracias, Venezuela. Means thank you. Gracias, viva Venezuela. God bless America. We are so grateful for you, um, the way you has make us feel welcome here. Um, we just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity, for giving me your ear to hear from God. Let me tell you, this is such a big responsibility. Um, I promise it was not easy to stand up here. I'm taking so more minutes because this is the last service. At the first, at the first service, I was like, oh, my God, watch the cloth. It's so... <laughs> You know how Hispanic people is. You, you always know when the party starts, but never know when it's over. It's like <laughs> I, was, I had Brian and Sherry texting me yesterday, praying for you to take only 40 minutes. <laughs> that was all they said, because they know how I, <laughs> how I am. But thank you so much. God bless you. And please allow me to pray in Spanish. You know, prayers is so attached to the intimacy that I just want to make it on my own language. Señor, gracias por esta oportunidad. Gracias por prestarme el oído de mis hermanos. Qué compromiso, Señor. 
porque sé que la misma oportunidad que tengo para bendecir, también la tengo para hacer lo opuesto. Confío en que tus palabras han llenado el corazón y la necesidad de cada uno de ellos. Señor, es lo que tu misma palabra dice, que no vuelve a ti vacía, sino que llega, llena el propósito en el corazón, el propósito que tú tienes con cada uno. Yo no les conozco ni conozco su necesidad, pero tú sí. Te pido que seas tú cubriendo y satisfaciendo esa necesidad, que ellos puedan sentir tu amor rodeándoles, ayudándoles en todo. Te lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. What a blessing. So now we will move into this time where we gather around the table together, people of faith from all walks of life from all over the world, to share in Holy Communion this sacrament that Jesus has given us to remember him. Would you pray with me as we prepare our hearts? Lord, we are grateful that you have given us life that you have given us a place to belong, to feel safe, and to know, Lord, that we have a purpose and that we can share together as the body of Christ in this place. Forgive us, God, for any barriers that we've ever put up for other people, and especially those barriers that we've put up for ourselves to be close and intimate and real with you. We are grateful for your grace that loves us through all of those struggles. And we pray today, Lord, that you will forgive us for the times that we have been selfish, for the times that we have found ourselves embodying sin and brokenness. Even the sin, Lord, that we didn't even know we were committing And today, on this day that is your day, we come around the table that Christ prepared for us. And we say to you, O oh God, that we are sorry and that we repent. And we pray, Lord, that you would restore us through the amazing grace and the blood of Christ Jesus that was shed for each of us, for all of us, so that we may be safe so that we may belong, so that we may feel comfortable with one another as the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit this day on these gifts of bread and juice, and may they be for us a holy living reminder of what Jesus has done for each and every human being, how you have given us great sacred worth, And you call us to a place called home with you. We pray this prayer today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the night that Jesus was gathered with his disciples in the upper room, the night before he was taken into custody and later, later crucified on the cross, He gathered with his disciples, and he broke bread with them. And as he did, he lifted up the loaf, and he said to the believers there, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, receive. And at the end of that meal, Jesus lifted the cup. And as he lifted it before those gathered, he said to them, This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is our covenant together as people of faith. This is what we share in common with all who profess his name and live a life of discipleship and faith. And so it is with us today that once again we gather around this open table that Christ has called us to and invites us to. At Hillsdale Church, this table is open for all people, anyone who is willing to come. Here we like to call this our altar call because if you haven't accepted Christ, now at this altar you can come and receive. 
and make Jesus a part of your life. That's what we're doing. That's why it's open to all people. You don't have to be a member here. This sacrament is for you. In just a few moments, the ushers will uh, give you the opportunity to come forward. We will have two lines that come down the center aisle, and they will direct you at the appropriate time for you to come. Tori and I will be handing out the bread, the body of Christ. As you come, it's appropriate for you to come and receive, not, not to take, but to receive Jesus. And you will take the bread and go ahead and, and eat it. And then as you step toward the table, there will be the little cups of juice for you to receive the blood as part of our sacrament. If you have a gluten allergy and you need gluten-free bread, at the end of each table, there's a basket where you will need to go and, and get the gluten-free bread so uh, you don't have any kind of reaction we want this to be appropriate for all of you. Come with a heart willing to receive what Christ calls us to as faithful believers in belief and practice. The table is open. Come.
about you It's all about you It's all about you, stand as we receive this benediction this morning. May we all go in the grace and love of Christ Jesus as we find in ourselves a new spirit, a new life, a revival of God's love for each of us to go into a world that is lost and hurting and broken. May we go and witness to the love of Christ in each of us. And all God's people said, amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.